for tuning in today. We got an amazing show for you guys. And every Sunday, we got it hot in the yard. So let's get started. Our topic today is no fly zone. And on the grill, we're talking burning and seasoning eight mile. And you know, I love setting up every episode with a quote that lays the groundwork for an interesting and provocative conversation. So here's the quote. I've done a lot of horrible shit, but I did it with love. And that comes from our guest today. And I'm so excited. So let's talk, express, relate, and connect with our special guest today. Trick Trick is in the backyard. And we got Top Dog. And we got Top Dog in the house too. What's up, Top Dog? What's up, man? Hey. <laughs> yeah, it's the big dog, baby. For y'all, right? Big dog. It's the big dog. Big dog. Big I dog. seen Top Dog and I seen King, so I was confused. It's, 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 it's the big dog, man. Big dog. All right, we're going to cut that out. But you know I know you and I love you. So oh, what you about to do? I ain't up to nothing, just chill. You know, come on now. You you my sister-in-law by, by God giving by default. You know what I'm saying? My brother is your husband. So yeah. you definitely know me. Yeah, <laughs> very well. Yeah, Pretty yeah. Much. But yeah. I ain't been up to nothing, just suck a duck and dummy dodge I know that's right. What's up, Trick Trick? Thank you so much for coming to the yard. God bless you, sister. Thanks for having me. Glad you are here. So I've been waiting. When I heard I got the opportunity to get you, I was like, let me take off my suit jacket and throw on my Gucci hat, knock off, and get the (laughs) boom. So, you know, I just got off at six, so I'm looking spiff at seven, right? There you go. I can see. <laughs> right. What you up to, Trick Trick? Uh, turning some corners in Los Angeles, uh, dealing with some film business and some, uh, some uh, interviews and some uh, cannabis business and just, you know, crossing T's, dotting eyes. Right, right. That's what it's Stick about when you're in LA. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, right. yeah, get your yeah. business done and get the fuck out of here. Yeah. It costs too much. Because you can. <laughs> it costs too much out here. Let me tell you something. Hey, this gas price is embarrassing. Oh. It's embarrassing. Where we at now on the gas? Because I just walk everywhere now. No, I'm just... I, I saw 429. 429? Yeah, bro. Four twenty nine. I got two dollars and some change on my ass. <laughs> well, yeah. shit, bro, we like we can get some good premium for like three forty nine crib. But they talking six bucks, damn it, for some primo. Wow. Oh, cool. Are you in Beverly Hills getting gas? <laughs> no, I'm right now. I'm in Culver City. Wow. Okay. Well, they charge high over here. Come to the hood and get some gas. We can get set you straight for two. I was over there. That's why I saw that four twenty nine. Goddamn me! I was like, whoa, on Crenshaw. Trying to kill people. Oh yeah, it is. We pay yeah. higher prices and less stuff. Yeah. I, uh, it's good. Yeah. So what's going on on the backyard? We sitting up here recording some music right now. I just got everybody, you know, to turn the music down, take a little break. We trying to get these up and coming artists in and out the door over here, you know? Oh, okay, okay. Right. y'all got a little artist from St. Louis over there. Yeah, yeah. Oh, Jesus, huh? Yeah, Jesus okay. Road. Jesus kind of nice. Yeah, he real nice. They like Jesus. Yeah, that's what's up. Yep. So that's his name, Ooh. Young Jesus, huh? Jesus Rose. Yeah. All right. R&BK. Jesus with a Z. Oh, okay. You know, only oh, one okay. could carry that S, and it ain't nobody right. that look like us. <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah. So, Trick, I wanted to ask you, what does no fly zone mean? 
Oh shit. <laughs> <laughs> it's been so long I forgot. <laughs> oh goddamn. Uh Ah oh, shit. I d I don't know what it mean now, nah, hell. I, I passed that shit long, long a minute ago, you know. Uh I what I what I, all I did was uh Tell the record labels to stop sending their fucking artists to do those promo runs until you picked up some artists from Detroit. And in the process, me being in the industry, you know, it's uh, if I have an altercation, it's going to go faster than if another, you know, it, the news travel faster than, than if a civilian have an altercation. And so whenever I would have like certain artists, certain issues with certain artists, I got an issue with you. I don't give a fuck if you're an artist or not. I'm going to deal with you. Right. So, if I got this uh, long-standing law with the industry to not send your artist to Detroit if you ain't here to pick up no artists, and then an artist show up and me and that motherfucker can't see out of eye, my action's going to look like I'm on tip about that. But a lot of times, it wasn't that. You know, was, I got my message across to the in, uh, in, uh music industry and when they thought I was bullshit and I showed them I wasn't and uh I, I wasn't setting up challenges I was making a point to the same thing you just said for a lot of the younger artists that's coming up like they ain't had like they, they're great artists very talented artists and it's just the level of excuse my French uh let me see how I can say this uh uh, pecker handling without being too rude that's going on like in some of these places like in Detroit you know there's a lot of sucking going on you know when it came to people and how they treated people that came from other places versus how they treated their own and if when I saw that problem I said shit I tell y'all what the only entertainment you motherfuckers gonna get around here is gonna be entertainment from around here until we get some attention on what we got around here so y'all quit sucking off on these other motherfuckers all the time. Facts, facts. You know, I know some niggas that are actually literally go against somebody that live in the same town with them about an out of town nigga. And that's bitch shit to me, you know what I'm saying? I've seen it happen over and over again. I even had verbal, you know, uh, semi-confrontation with a few people myself about you know, their want to be so engaged with this artist versus what the fuck I say. And it's like, uh, I live here. So if you want to go to war with me about this out of town motherfucker, then so be it. And at that point, when I saw myself getting ready to activate my space invaders, I was getting ready to put my quarter in. I said, you know what? These motherfuckers want to suck dick so bad. Excuse me, sister. They want to blow so bad why don't I just go ahead and let them be with they, you know what I'm saying? And leave them alone and walk away from that. You know, at that right. time, the artists in Detroit had started getting, you know, the play that they deserved and the recognition and the airplay and the bookings and the, and it was like, cause, cause this season I'm finna activate my space invaders and start tearing up shit. I'm gonna let these niggas go and suck dick like they want to. And, and Willie D taught me a long time ago, you gotta let a hoe be a hoe. <laughs> you know, That's so, fact. Yeah, let them just be hoes and let them do what they do and get out their way and let them suck all the dick they want. Excuse me again, it's just, but you know, it's a, it's un, it's a, it's un, it's unfortunate that some niggas would rather go down the toilet ass backward than sit on the toilet seat. You know what I mean? But hey, you like dirty water up your ass, you go ahead, sucker. I know that's, that's right, man. No fly zone. So in other words, it was more about you from a leadership standpoint saying, hey, if you ain't spending no money here and it's not helping to build what we got going here as far as they music. Get the fuck out. There yeah, it is. Get the fuck out. And then, yeah. but, and then, you know, it was only a couple of times where the end, you know, I sent the message out and they're like, ah, oh, he just, uh, even most, and, and they got that type of sticking out of the chest from niggas from Detroit. You know, he ain't gonna do nothing. Okay, bitch, come on. 
you know, and, I, and then I was at a point in my life where I felt like, okay, I'm being challenged at, at my law. And so I have to prove a point to these motherfuckers. And I did for a minute. And yeah. then after a while, I was like, I'm not finna keep proving nothing to no bunch of bums. No bunch of cock licking bums. Right. You know, go, hey, let them do what they do. And let, let you know, if the artists want to come and fuck on them and take their money and let go ahead. And then you know what happened though? When I walked away, I got so many calls and, and direct messages. Oh, I can't believe so-and-so did this and this person did this. Like, I heard recently, like I got so many calls in the, in the early spring or somewhat, sometime around the early summer that Jeezy had came to Detroit, which, and, and he's a normal in the D, so he like, he, he, he damn near Detroiter the way he comes to Detroit, so there's nothing to be, you know, he, he cool, you know, so right. shit. I ain't, I never tripped one because ever came because he always been all right with me. So uh, he had came and the bed, people got upset. I had woke up 20 something goddamn messages and phone calls talking about the nigga. They had a show and, and uh, it was supposed to be a show and all he did was walk through for 10 minutes and left. And I said, y'all like that Atlanta dick in your mouth. That what you want. Right. What the fuck you calling me for now? He gone. It's about. He said he gave away these bikes and he ain't give away nothing. I say y'all like that Atlanta dick in your mouth. <laughs> Go ahead and do what you do with it, dog. Don't call right. me no motherfucker more. Book on, niggas. Book them all. Keep getting fucked by all of them. Keep making, letting them play. Go ahead, nigga. Yeah. Papa don't give a fuck no more. I got two grandbabies. <laughs> fuck these motherfuckers. <laughs> Good. I love that. I love that. Hey. I'm gonna do my goddamn. I'm gonna do me a motherfucking documentary. It's gonna be called. Uh, I, I, it ain't none of my goddamn business. <laughs> no, I'm too, I tell you, next year, I say I'm gonna do a comedy special next year, right? First time, okay. one night only. I'm gonna do a one hour comedy special, and it's gonna be called. Hold on, I remember this. Hold on, hold on. It's gonna be called. Um. What did I say? I said, oh, I'm too old for this shit. <laughs> hey, Thriller gonna be in the lineup? Ah. Hell yeah, we gotta open it up. <laughs> oh, wow. Oh, man. These That's might that. do a few minutes and sell. Oh, yeah. He gonna be in the yeah. middle. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Hey, listen, I'm doing a one night, only one hour comedy special. I'm filming it and everything. And it's gonna be called, I'm too old for this shit because you have no idea how many calls I get. It's a nigga in my message right now telling me he was out here in LA performing somewhere. Mm -hmm. And the, one of the artists he had with him snatched, uh, uh, some, some nigga snatched her chain. And now he calling me, asking me to get in touch with my big brother. Tell me, hey nigga, wait a minute. You ain't hear what we said. Long time ago about that. And so if you, maybe if you would have had some Nick, some of them niggas that you're trying to reach out to now with you when you first, you probably wouldn't have had that problem. More than likely, you wouldn't have that problem. In. Yeah, if you check in, you'd have been under. And, and and it ain't about telling you know going somewhere and tell, I gotta check in. And I'm like, if you feel like that, then you just on some pussy shit. I would love nothing more than to go somewhere and tell somebody. uh Shit, I'm here. Goddamn me. Well, get your wait, line wait, together, bro. Yeah, where's hold on? Let me see. Is that it? There you go. There we go. Hey, there you go. I, I, yeah, let me pull up and say, I'm coming. I'm on my way. Right. I need to be with the folks. You know what I mean? I ain't, it ain't about no, oh, I gotta go check in. But no, I need to be with my folks when I get to this dangerous motherfucker. That's or it. my folks need to be alert and put the word out. My man here, hey, if you see him, Look out for him. You know, that's what I do to motherfuckers when they come to Detroit and they call me. Hey, Trick, I'm put if I ain't there, I'm gonna put somebody on their tail until they get back to their fucking hotel. Right. Real talk. I've been doing that shit for a hundred years. If I ain't in town, and if I'm in town, when you check in with me, it's like you check in your motherfucking hotel. Or you don't lay down. When you come to my town and you check in with me, I'm gonna make sure you got everything you need, dog. Right. We ain't on that old shit. I mean, hey, we, if you my man, because when I come to your town, I'm going to want the same motherfucking respect and treatment. 
Right. And, and so when you get the mind, I'm going to lay it out for you. I'm going to lay it all the way out. You tell me what it is you need, and you ain't got to worry about it no goddamn more. Right. Yeah, I'm that nigga that get you a police escort from the hotel to the motherfucking venue if that's what you feel like you need. Or I get you a goon squad escort better than that. I'm the motherfucker, when you need to smoke good, you're going to smoke like you're supposed to smoke, not what you think you're supposed to smoke like. Right, you right. You want to fuck on some bitches, I'll find them bitches too and drop them right the fuck off to you. Don't give them a nickel. I done paid them for you. <laughs> now, that's nice. That's what you call delivery. And I heard you well, mentioned you know, the goon squad. Fuck you leave. <laughs> <laughs> what you think about that? What's that? Oh. <laughs> hey, I, I already know. You ain't, he ain't got to tell me nothing. I, hey, I've been going there since 1993. And I'm talking about <laughs> everything that he's saying. it been laying on the table for me since 1993. I ain't fucked up with it. You dig what I'm saying? And I'm definitely going to call. Dig this, bro. Where you at? Woo, woo, woo. Well, if you ain't there, then hey, get BH. Get Skull. Goddamn me. Uh, woo, woo, woo. Tell the motherfucker I'm coming through. It, and it be just like that. Just like I that. Detroit, I gotta come to Detroit because I ain't getting it out here in LA like that. I you might see what that's about in Detroit. From the best I'm smoke to heavyweight head, goddamn me. Yes, sir. And, you know the love is just the blue room, wherever though, all over. It ain't no, you know what I'm saying? It's all over the place, goddamn me. And when he come here, he hit me up and she, you know, and he move around. He move around. He make me go places that I don't even go in my own motherfucking city. Oh wow! Yeah, he tell he tells my guys every time he pull up. So you know what I'm saying? <laughs> hey, but that's what it is though, because I ain't fucked up about it. And on the check in point, like if you're a real man, it ain't no problem because that's what you' supposed to do. You dig what I'm saying? And just like when I come to your house, I ain't never been to no hotel. I ain't always stay in the same house you live in. Yep. From upstairs to the back. I ain't never, I ain't never, but yeah, in your in your city, Miss Lisa, I always stayed in the house that you live in with your husband. Right. Yeah. I ain't never stayed in no hotel. But one time I stayed in the Emmy Suite because I had somebody else with me. And I've been to your city over a hundred times. I know, and I see you every time you hear. All the time. Uh, that. Yeah, just like that. You know what I'm saying? But oh, that's what it I'm is, though. You said uh -huh. something about the goon squad. Ooh. How did you? How did the goon squad come together? Who is the goon squad? Can you say <laughs> their names? No. <laughs> no. No. It's a lot. It's a lot of us. You know, we. You know, we. Uh, we a family. You know, we. Right. It's a lot of, and, and we just live by that creed. Uh, you know, we we work together. So. When you need me, I'm there. When I need you, you there. And you know, we live by that. We live by the code of being there for each other and being 100 with each other. And you know, keeping that, keeping that energy, reciprocating that energy. You know what I'm saying? Because you don't got a lot of that. Like I was telling Big Bro earlier, listen, me and one of my other big brothers got we in a competition to see who can who can make the other one the most money. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Type. Oh, wow. Like, yeah, you bought me a deal for fifty something thousand and uh, thirty thousand. I'm bringing you something for a hundred thousand, and this is real shit mm -hmm. we're talking about. You know what I mean? We we presenting lifelong uh, uh, op opportunities for one another. You know what I mean? Right. But you you as in any family, you have to prove yourself worthy and loyal of that type of accommodation because everybody don't deserve that type of umbrella. Correct. Everybody's not worthy of that type of love, and you know, it's black people need to stick together. Some black people need to learn how to be motherfucking humans instead of ants and roaches and rats, weasels and snakes. You know, act like all these motherfuckers is polished goddamn pieces of gold. Some of them ain't worth for monkeys, fuck, and they should be goddamn put down. Some of them. real shit. So, yeah. but when it come to us. We got to be together. We together yeah. under the order of the lion. You understand me? Pride, yeah. our pride, our family. Family is everything. You take care of family first. Yeah. Family is first. You know what I mean? And fuck a motherfucker ain't, that's, that ain't in the family. If they ain't with us, they ain't with us. If they're not our concern. See, we work and build together on the collective. We are our own self-contained unit. Vertical. 
self-contained unit from all aspects of any business. You understand me? From law to physiology to sound to film to television to radio to podcasting to education to 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 to, to political uh, uh to the political realm. You know what I'm saying? As it relates to voting and community organization, we are self-contained unit on all those levels. And we don't need to broadcast and talk about who we are. We are GSM. That's who yeah. we are. Goon Squad Mafia for life, baby. Goon Squad, life. shout out to yeah. the Goon Squad. Yes, so, sir. how did you meet Eminem, Trick Trick? That nigga grew up in the city. <laughs> <laughs> He's a nigga in the hood. Like, he used to be around proofing him at the hip hop shop all the time. He just, he's like, you know, he's a cool young dude that used to rap like a motherfucker. At the Maurice yeah, Malone over there? Hip hop shop. The Maurice Malone spot over there? Yeah. Maurice okay. Malone hip hop shop. Okay, okay. So he used to be over there basically getting his rap on with uh, Proof and the rest of the crew earlier. Mm -hmm. Yep, that's right. That's really cool. I wish he would come back out though with some music, even though he don't have to. I just want to hear it because he murdered he just, lyrics. He just did something not too long ago. You know, he all, in this day and age, you know, the, you got to follow the artists wholeheartedly to keep up with what they, you know, because it's a whole nother, you know, it's a whole nother game than what it was back in the day. It's, it's not, mm -hmm. it's still controlled and still ran by them. Jewish people, but right. uh, it's, it's you know it's another it's ran differently. You know what I mean? I mean they they still control it because shit they control everything. But right. it, it's now is a time where these artists can be more proactive in creating you know they're creating names for themselves. Mm -hmm. A lot of these artists and then they turning it over to the Jewish folk. And, and get in place where they want them to be instead of what they full potential as an individual. Like you, you the artist, dog. You the one they came looking for. You can yeah. do this on your own when you don't need them. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And you know, so with now they dictate what you gonna hear. It always been that way. But now right. you know, you got the internet where you could go find your favorite artist because you won't hear nobody, I'm sorry. You won't hear nobody talk about my brother Tech Nine, but hey, he there and he live hey. and living color and full fledged, one hundred percent operation. Yeah, all engine mobile, and he ain't stopping. And he point is, he exists when a lot of people don't even know who the fuck he is. And they show up for him. And they, they show, show up for him everywhere yeah. he go. Yeah, wow. they show up for him everywhere yeah. he go. Yeah. You know, and Eminem is just Eminem is like that. You ain't getting to, you know, granted Jimmy Irene them can pay for whatever radio they want to pay for. If mm -hmm. you know, if the record ain't gonna do what it's gonna do, then shit, it just ain't gonna do it. You know what I mean? And but that don't mean that music is not great music. That don't mean his fans won't appreciate that music. You know, it just means, you know, hey, maybe they stopped the budget at a certain point. Cause anytime you hear records that big get played like that, they've been paid for. Yes, indeed. And I think that sets us up nicely. You smoking one trick, got the smoke going. Let's go to the grill. Let's go to the grill. Thanks for throwing up that Eminem for us, big dog. No, this this is this is love me love. This trick trick, man. I can't see. This is oh, 11. This is 11. Right? 11. The, the numbers, that 11, those E. It look like that's that 11, 11. That's the new oh, trick okay. out. Well, yeah, shoot, that's the new trick Let's talk about your new album after we get up off this grill. All right. Because I want to talk about the 8 Mile. Since we left with Eminem, I want to talk about 8 Mile and what that street culture is about. And where is it? Nothing. Why is it nothing. called Nothing. Miles? Nothing. Eight Mile is nothing. nothing. Eight Mile is nothing but a border between the suburb, I mean, between Oakland County and Wayne and, County, or between Wayne County, yeah. Macomb County and Wayne mm -hmm. County. Detroit is in Wayne County. Detroit ride the line of Eight Mile. That's where hey. the counties come off at. Now, it's just, it's a difference in police departments. When you cross Eight Mile and you go on the other side, 
that's where the police department is majority white. And okay. that's where you more subject to go to jail with your black ass out there on some bullshit. On right. the other side, Eight Mile is Detroit. Mm-hmm. And it's only a name of a mile, one mile away from Seven Mile, which is one mile away from Six Mile, which is one <laughs> mile away from Finkel, which is technically considered Five Mile, which is one mile away from so on and so on. Schoolcraft for, you know, blah, 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 blah. Seven Mile is actually named Seven Mile. Eight Mile is actually named Eight Mile. Six Mile is not called Six Mile until it gets the telegraph. It's called West McNichols or East McNichols, but they call it Six Miles. So it ain't shit. Eight Mile ain't nothing but a road. It don't matter. Hey, but, it has- but Eight Mile and Mound, it's a spot right there. And it's something oh, like no, that. No, 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 mean, yeah. Eight Mile and Mound. Now, eight, now, hold on now. now shit, eight now. Mile and Mound. Eight, eight Mile and Mound is where the cookie store is at. Yeah. The cookie, and, uh, the cookie store. That's 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 uh, one of my favorite, one of my favorite places. You should, you know, definitely patronize that establishment. Okay, it got it's, that heavyweight head in there. It got that heavyweight head in there. Orangutan in that sunshine. It's yeah, okay, there. okay, okay. It got that yeah, shit in cultivated there. Cultivated by yeah. the heavyweight heads. Yeah, they're yeah. real good. Okay, yeah. It's called the cookie store. Yeah, it's cookies. It's a cookie store. Oh, okay. Old school cookie or those new cookies that we like? Cookies, the new cookies. The new the cookies. New cookies. The, cookie okay. yeah. the blue one with the white C. You know what it is. Yeah. 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 Them type of cookies. Yeah, them type of cookies. What you smoke with. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's all happening down at the Eight Mile? The cookies? Is that eight Mile and Mile? Yes. Yeah. I mean, eight miles is like the titty bar strip. It's a main titty bar strip. It's a few titty bars on that motherfucker. But I mean, eight miles, eight miles ain't nothing special like that. It's a gang of dispensaries on that motherfucker. It ain't. It's just a county line. It's okay. it, it, they they named it. They they named that eight, movie Eight Mile because shit. That was the street they wanted to name it after. They didn't want to call it Seven Mile, which really where the hip hop shop was at, where okay. the man used to actually go to battle and rap at. You know, but. Whatever. Fuck it. Eight Mile is fine because Seven Mile is mine. I know that's right. And Eight Mile probably had a, a better ring to it for them. They don't know about them sevens, Turk Turk. Yeah, shame on them. That's good. <laughs> I'll take it. <laughs> take it too. So, I mean, basically, you got this big reputation and it's just different miles with different numbers. And the hip hop. Yeah, yeah. Where the crew got down was the seventh mile, not necessarily the eighth. Because the seventh, no, no, they was, on, they was on seven mile. Okay. Even the, even the other club that brother them used to rap at, Proof and M and D Twelve, all of them used to rap at, was mm-hmm. on seven mile. It was called the Ebony Showcase Lounge. That okay. was on seven mile. That was on seven mile Evergreen on the west side, where the seven mile dogs neighborhood. Mm-hmm. Seven mile dog neighborhood. You know what I'm saying? The hip hop shop was in the Seven Mile Twenty Twenty neighborhood. Okay, now, I'm from Seven Mile BK neighborhood. All right. So Seven Mile is my that's mine. That's my Seven Mile is my mile. I'm the wizard of Seven Mile. Okay. The longest with longest standing Seven Mile BK. Yeah. All right then. Shoot, I was yeah. thinking Such about Eight Mile because of the movie. You know, it was so expansive i was like let me ask trick trick what's up with this eight mile but it really ain't the eight miles the seven mile where y'all got down and if it's the seven mile where y'all well, got down that's to... where it happened yeah that's yeah that's what that happened that you know yeah. so you know but this everything on on the on the inside of seven mile in detroit is where it's, you get the real detroit right the rest of that right. stuff is cool you know it's cool it is what it is but detroit is on the south side of eight mile mm-hmm that's what yeah Detroit is in there well I gotta ask you about proof I mean he was just such an amazing talent man when you guys lost him in 2006 I know how did that affect the crew and you especially well uh, you know any loss is a fucked up loss you know what I mean sometimes you don't expect some people to you know leave and then sometimes you know it's coming you know so it, and it's, you know, you just gotta, hey, that's what this life is, you know? This motherfucker start, this motherfucker end. Some people gonna be here, some people ain't. 
Right. You got to be ready for that and prepare for that because that's what it is. Because with life comes death. But with death, you know, and, and after, so people say you only live once. Bullshit. You live every day. You only die once. You know, and that spirit is transpired. You want to leave behind the, the spirit and the, the the vibe and the energy of somebody that made a difference. The proof was that motherfucker. You know what I mean? He did a lot of things for a lot of people just out of the kindness of his heart and him just being a really good dude. You know what I mean? I know I've been knowing proof since he was like 14 years old. You know what I mean? He's staying on Santa Barbara. Mm. Not too far from me. We went to the same studio, which was Mo Master Productions. So when his name was Maximum, you know, before he grew his dreads, he used to kind of, a young nigga used to kind of school me on shit to do in the studio, like doing hooks. I ain't fuck with hooks. Like, I, it was, I rapped, I, I go all the way back to 95 to 92, really. GBK, Life of a Gangster, my first record and video that was on uh, Channel 62 in Detroit. You know what I'm saying? It was, that was 1992. So, and I met Proof then. Mm -hmm. So, uh, before I, you know, when I got out of prison, I went to make my uh, From Death album. He was actually on the cover of the album with me. And, you know, he kind of helped me through that album. Even though he wasn't on it, he kind of, like, yo, you should change this to this, or you should change this to this. And I will always, you know, take his criticism. Proof the one taught me, like, the first, the second time I went on stage, he the one that kind of coached that performance to go, you know, where where I learned the art of actual performing, and, you know, adapted it to fall in love with it to be able to perform like I do today. Right. Because I, got a, I have an amazing stage show, you know, and uh, I'm very proud of that. And I, I owe the birth of that, you know, mentality and the birth of that create, you know, that type of creativity to proof. Right. You know? So, you know, when you got all these years of people, you know, and then you lose them, it's like, shit, what the fuck you gonna do? What you gonna do? Yeah. You gonna go change? Hey, nothing you can do about it. So all you had to do was learn from it. God forbid they die of something that, you know, something where you try to tell them or talk to them or something, you know, but you, you learn from it and you cherish the time and the, the energy that you got from that particular relationship and, and thank the most high for blessing you with the presence of that great spirit and get on with your life because if you stay there, you're going to fall. Yep, that's facts. And we're going to end the grill with that very statement. So let's take eight mile off the grill, especially since seven miles is the one that matters because that's where Trick Trick's at. So let's keep these questions going, man. How was your experience on FX uh, Hip Hop Uncovered? What was that experience like? That was fun. It was, I mean, you know, it was... It was one of them things where Big U called me and said, yo, bro, uh, I got this thing, this documentary I'm executive producing, uh, and I need you to be a part of it. I was mm -hmm. like, all right, bet. And then we started talking about some other shit. And then a couple months later, he called back again, like, hey, bro, remember when I called you about the documentary shit? He's like, yeah, they're getting ready for it. I'm like, oh, okay, bet. Yeah, just let me know, whatever you need, I got you. And then we started talking about some other shit. And then right. one day, Three months later, he called back and said, remember when I had called you and told you about that documentary? He's like, yeah, they right here at the shit now. So I'm about to put you on the phone with so-and-so, you know, with the director. Right. He put me on the phone with the director. And then we had that powwow about the beginning. And then I was like, okay, cool. And then the, the next call, I mean, well, I talk to Big U all the time in between mm -hmm. that. But when he called about it again, it's the production company calling and saying, all right, we need your information for your flights and your contract and blah, blah, blah 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 and it's like oh shit we're here you know what I mean right. but in the process of all that you know I'm always busy doing this and that this and that between cannabis and filmmaking and blah and family and radio and music and blah blah blah, blah. so it's like it's something that became a dot on the schedule or calendar dots on right. the calendar with the rest of the dots on the calendar and then 
when I sat down to do the interview and got there to do the interview and saw the size of the cameras and the amount of cameras, I was like, oh shit, oh, okay, we finna shoot a documentary documentary. Oh, okay, gotcha, bet. Now, and then the producer and the director set it up to where they could, they would ask the type of questions to get me to respond the way I responded. And they got themselves a masterpiece. They sure so it wasn't nothing, nothing different than like doing that documentary did not alter my uh alter nothing meaning meaning it was a course of day and a conversation that people paid me a lot of money to talk to right you know so it was like all right and then tomorrow i'm gonna make some money doing this and the next day i'm gonna make some money doing that and then when i watched it i was like fuck this is good <laughs> it is. It was so good. I wanted well, to. No, add the secret, I, I haven't seen ahead. the rest of it. Like I still haven't had a chance to finish watching. It. And then to okay. just be a woman finally. I knew there had to be a woman OG somewhere. And then when they got when they got Deb, I said, "Man, they got the right one for that one. She about to smack okay. that." Yeah. You heard me. So she put the. She put the uh -huh. she put the finishing touches on. It. Yes, she did. She put the, she she rounded it into shape. That was it right there. Yeah, that was, yeah. She, she, you ready? That was a good match because they couldn't have put nobody else in the room with them. Uh, was, every, everybody everybody that was on it was the perfect person for it. Yeah, because you got to even remember he was actually the only artist that and that, OG that that can that can touch both worlds. Yeah, that's everybody right. else was in the in the field of it, and he was actually the artist and the OG that could touch both worlds, could touch anywhere, could touch anybody, yeah. and that's what it was. And that's why I really was asking you. We lost your video. That's why I was asking you, trick trick, what your experience was because you're an artist and you're an OG and you know what's going on in these three Z's. So it's like bringing all of that usually an artist is just so concerned about what they look like what they getting who's gonna wait on them you know it becomes a very egotistic type role but for you you just navigated through everything the og part you navigated through the artists and you looked like an artist on the on the show you was the one i don't want i mean everybody on the show was great but you know how an artist looks how an artist shows up to the party things is crisp and and everything is put together and the ogs was more or less there because they do a lot of behind the scenes stuff so that's why i wanted to ask you what is the definition of an og because i don't i i think people got it mixed up so i wanted to hear from an og what that means i mean if you're in the names and titles you know i believe the original terminology og meant the original gangster Mm -hmm. um, and you know, but the original gangster could take on a lot of meanings to you know different people, however they interpret it. You know, right? Uh, uh, you know, to me, a gangster is a person that look that take care of their community all the way. Mm -hmm. It's not you know, a gangster is not a bad thing to me, not a real gangster because you know you got your crew and y'all have a responsibility, y'all hood. It's not about beefing with another set it's about keeping them from coming over here being disrespectful right you know? uh and and i mean that goes for everybody over here the elderly women and children the mothers the women the you know the you need to have all that you know our jobs is that our jobs is to protect that element of our community we are the men the leaders of our community and you know that's what uh, oh, and, and as a leader you got to lead by example you know you can't be out here doing you know i i can't stand to see a grown motherfucker walk around with two styrofoam cups <laughs> you don't sit your dumb ass down somewhere fool you look like a fucking idiot nigga those two styrofoam cups shit. Right. Trying, you ain't, ain't no ain't no real nigga never did no shit like that you know what i'm saying before these young motherfuckers started they little trend that's a trend two styrofoam cups nigga you a grown right. ass man you know what i mean look what, what kind of fucking example you setting for your sons daughters 
nephews and nieces and the little homies in the neighborhood. Can, can you imagine if the dumb shit that we did, if we didn't have somebody to teach us and, and that we could learn from to do something better, how how more fucked up it'd be right now? Yeah. Like, because it's only really a few of us that actually pass on that knowledge. Most of these motherfuckers either one dead or a part of the bullshit or just too fucking scared to give a fuck. Yeah. You know what I mean? And as long as you somebody that people gonna pay attention to, then you gotta make sure that you gotta be responsible enough to make sure they're paying attention to something that's got some substance to it. Something that promotes life instead of something that promotes death and ignorance and the, and the, and the deterioration of a people. You know, we the only motherfuckers that got let go from slavery and didn't go fuck home. You understand what I'm saying? So we run around this bitch, don't know who we is. But we too busy trying to prove a point to each other who we are instead of proving the point to our motherfucking self that we better than the situation that we woke up in. Yeah. That with the right power, with the right mentality, and using your mind, the most powerful weapon that you have, you can come out of and do better than anything. You can imagine yourself to the greatest point in your fucking life. Yeah. You know, you can you can program your man mental to get you from out of the shit. Mm-hmm. And as an OG, it's my job to try to, you know, it's my responsibility, not job. My responsibility to just when I'm speaking to somebody and I feel like they need that information. It's going the most high gonna it's gonna come out. The universe gonna push that way. It's gotta go anyway. Cause I didn't survive all the shit I survived in my life for me to just be here. You did. These messages got to get passed on and, 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 and let our ancestors work through me, you know, to keep a message going. You know what I mean? Because let me tell you, man, if we ever get in touch with our mind, if we ever get control of our mind and stop being so destructive by all this ignorance and stupidity and worthless shit, these motherfuckers climbing up crates and shit now. Nah. Yeah, you know, it's all, I heard about this. This beat is on the goddamn loose. These motherfuckers literally dumb enough to climb these damn crates and break their fucking backs, necks, uh. legs. Everything to try to get some likes or to try to get a couple dollars. Oh my like, god! Damn, like you, damn, y'all, y'all just do anything. Look at our women; they run around this motherfucker. They hate their goddamn self. And when the the, the the dudes that meet these people that hate they self, they hate them. So until you love yourself, you ain't gonna even. Nobody gonna love you. You know what I mean? Look, we run around this motherfucker. We got all these decorations all over us. You know what I mean? Don't even, you just in the fucking disguise. Look how many goddamn women around here look just like. Yeah. The fucking fur hanging off their eyelashes and shit. <laughs> uh, run around this motherfucker talking about city girls. Sit your shitty ass down. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, man. Oh, shit. <laughs> We gotta, you got, we gotta be more responsible with what yeah, we do. Attention to us, man. You know what I mean? Real talk. Look at our the biggest yeah, female do. celebrities in the game right now, and I love each and every one of them because I'm a man. Right. I love looking at them. God damn it, I'm a fan of Cardi B, Megan Thee Stallion, and Nicki Minaj. I like all right. of them. They, they, them some sexy motherfuckers. But is they message sexy for our little sisters? I'd their have message to, yeah, gonna, no. their message gonna help is, are, is their message gonna be the message that help another generation of young sisters get somewhere they gotta keep in mind now we had Queen Latifah all praises do we had Moni Love we had Salt and Pepper we had let's talk about female artists though MC Light you know what I mean the yeah. Lady of Rage these was women these was they wasn't on none of that shit and so this way you got the mothers some of the mothers that raised some of these great young men and women in this world today, they had that sense of guidance and understanding within the hip hop culture. Now look, what, what what happened when they what happened when Megan and them become OGs? What's that gonna be their message? What yeah, what are I, they gonna teach? Body yadi 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 yadi. Not knowing <laughs> that the body 
shuts down on you after a minute. You got to get that inside right because the body, it, it don't last but for a, a very short time. So if you ain't got nobody in love with your mind, guess what? You're going to be shaking a lot of loose skin, ladies. Yeah. I mean, that. hey, I love them, but like we got to we got to be accountable for, for yeah, what we, it is we're doing. Yeah, we got to. We got to. I get it, baby. You're making a fortune. You, I'm making these money, from, you know. Okay. Right. Like young Jesus, tell everybody else, trap it down. Hey, you don't tell your son that shit. <laughs> you don't tell your son that shit. Yeah. So say you something else, brother. And you can't have two conversations. You can't be yeah. one way and then saying another conversation. That's what I'm talking about, OG. That's what I'm talking about, trick, trick, being raw in the yard today. You know, right. that's what we need is just more people right. being real about it. This is a real situation. Be real within it. Yeah. That's the fact. Not to dance in the future, but shit. If you can imagine 20 years back and then take it to right now and then imagine 20 years into the future, even though that's an illusion, play yeah. with it. <laughs> yeah. I'm downloading that now. I'm going to get back to you, you on that. Scary one. shit. Yeah, that's scary so shit. Yeah, I'm sweating at the thought of that because it just ain't going to be a good look. But, uh, man, who you got right now, though, Trick Trick is your top five in hip-hop right now out of these youngsters. Any of them? Who you got? <laughs> and you too, big dog. Who y'all got right listen, now? He don't, he don't, I, I, he don't I listen to them. I, 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 like, I like some of them. But mm -hmm. I don't listen to them because it's just not what I listen to. It's not the music that grooves me. Not taking nothing away from it. It's obviously great. But I wouldn't play my albums for my grandma either. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. I'm just saying, like, if I had to pick some because of the, the, the characteristics of these people, I, right. I don't know their music, I would pick the baby one. Okay. I would pick 42 Doug for sure. Okay. Uh, from Detroit, I, uh, I always like Icewear Vezo. Okay, uh, he's from Detroit as well. Um, out of young artists, I, I, I'm gonna have to go with Hydro, and Courtney Bell, and OMG Flu. They all out of Detroit. Now, Other is there any the ladies? Band. Any ladies in that? Young. I used to. I used to be. I used to love this young lady artist. She, she, she's so talented. Her name is. Detroit Che, Detroit okay. Che. So she, but I haven't heard nothing from her in a while. Um, I like P Dot. Okay. P Dot because she got a raw ass voice. It's like raw, like she, like she's short. So I think that's just like her. A you know, I like, I like her. She get, she's on one of my new records. Uh, I got a video out right now, actually called "Fuck It Up." Okay. Uh, if you go to my Instagram page at Trick Trick GS and tap the video up there, that's the video. She on that song. So there's not a lot of female artists that, you know, do anything now that I can, you know, vibe to or, mm -hmm. you know, like that. I mean, I, the last female artist I used to like actually listen to was Foxy Brown. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like some rap shit because she was basically rapping like, you know, she was basically the female Biggie Smalls. Yeah, I loved her flow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I listen, you know. Of course, I, I love Lil Kim, but that's because I love Lil Kim as a family member. Right. That's just that, you know. She, she family. So. Right, and she'll forever. Yeah, be. But you talking about new? You talking about now? You know, like, I was like, talking about now. Ooh. But you, I mean, yeah, you named yeah. some up and coming guys. I was just wondering for the female, since you, I mean, they're all doing the same music, right? Now, city girls and all. B dot would be the one to stand out for me. Okay, cool. Because you know, you want you want an artist when you, you you know you like music, you get a great artist from originality. You know what I mean? Yeah. You, you yeah. Know, a lot of artists sound just alike, so it's like until you can get that person that stand above and beyond. I now I just got hip to this other little cute little motherfucker named Doja Cat. Oh, okay. Oh yeah, yeah. Now she's something special. Yeah. All right. 
Doja Cat got Trick Trick's vote. So how could we follow your movement, Trick Trick? Because I know you're moving and shaking here in town. So give us your uh, Instagram and website so we can keep up with your movement. At Trick Trick GS on Instagram, and that's like that's what that's it. I got a Twitter, but it's connected to the Instagram. I don't answer it. I just post on Instagram and it go to the Twitter. I got a Facebook, but I don't fuck with it. It goes from the Instagram to the Facebook. <laughs> I only got time to keep up with one of them motherfuckers. I don't do Clubhouse, Tinder, Tinker, TikTok, none of that old spy, uh, spy, what's the other shit? Snapchat. Yeah. I ain't got that kind of fucking time to do that kind of shit. But I do got Instagram. That is me. Uh, and don't direct message me, like, because I really don't, like, unless you fin like, Booking email is the only thing. I'm not, I don't care. Don't send me your stories about the shit that you just found out. I don't want to, I don't give a fuck about that shit. I got social media in a folder on my phone that say, I don't care. Okay. But I utilize it for, you know, to promote what I got going on and to share a few things to, you know, a little here and there. But I ain't that type of person to put all my personal shit. You're going to get that business, you know, at that trick trick merch.com. You'll get the Fly Zone Radio on Shade 45, which is on the air now. Right now. Uh, you can get, um, uh, yeah, that music and the movies. All right. Movie and, and, and that, music. And that heavyweight head. And that heavyweight head. Yeah. That's good stuff. Well, you know what? This whole thing, let's go back to the quote, and it comes from you. I've done a lot of horrible shit, but I did it with love. And that is so what you just gave us was all that love, all that intensity, and all of those facts. So we are so excited that you was able to share that with us. And uh, you know, big dog, me and you, we gonna get in the yard together. But yeah. uh, when you get here, but uh, yeah. so happy to have Trick Trick today in the yard. So no I want to say. I had to have my OG on here with me. He, he called me by the earliest day. And I called him back. I'm like, you going to do it with us? He like, yeah. you know, listen, yeah. one of the reasons that you can have this type of a conversation with Trick Trick is because of that man right there, Tojo. Yeah. That's, we had a serious conversation in 2013. A very yeah, serious and been, conversation. and been having serious conversations ever since then. Like that's an OG that I respect and value his opinion, his knowledge, his spirituality, and you know his everything before me, his experience before me. Like he went through that fire already, so he can tell me, "Don't go that way," and I'm gonna be like, "I ain't going that way." So I can tell the people behind me, "We ain't going that way. We're going that way." I'm telling you what I know, dog. This way, you yeah. know, and. Yeah. Yeah, Tojo, that's my guy. Yeah, Tojo, Sam. I love your life, my brother. So I love you much, too, brother. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. Real yeah. shit. Yeah. I, you yeah. know what? This ball, just I been... got a whole white beard now. Nah, just... <laughs> <laughs> I know. I said, what's up with all the, the white beard? Tojo claws. Hey, yeah. it started off as a pandemic beard. They won't let me cut it, though. Hey. No, nah, you got to keep all it good, So it go with me. Hey, yeah. don't be there. It's worth money. That motherfucker worth money. You hear me? Yes, sir. It is. That's, that's, sir. Knowledge, that's hey. knowledge and wisdom right there, man. There it is, knowledge and wisdom. I appreciate both of you guys for rocking, man. I can't wait till you come to LA. You know what I mean, big dog? And Trick Trick, you already here. But like I said, hey, I'm following hey, you. I've been in the studio soon. I've been in the studio with you. Okay, sounds like a plan. And then uh, Trick Trick, I can't wait to meet you in person, man. You know, Zoom don't <laughs> give me the gist, but you gave me all that you had. And that's 100% what you do in everything that you touch and you approach. So you the real deal. And for y'all to think y'all OGs, guess what? Follow people who really are, okay? And quit playing. And 
Thanks so much to my guests for tuning in. I really appreciate it. We had such a great time today. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like, share, comment. Check us out at our website, www.rappersinmybackyard.com. And also we're streaming on all platforms. Until Mr. I, I just can't even say it. I'm just so tongue tied at this point. But to you, Trick Trick, thanks so much for your time today big dog both of you guys for blessing the yard with your presence and your knowledge we really appreciate that and uh to the audience let's talk express relate and connect next sunday at two you know what we do we on a no fly zone don't come to my city respect all right y'all got anything else to say or we out of this piece that's it right. baby all right, thanks for rocking with us. We appreciate you guys. Okay. I'll see you soon, All right. All right, All right, All right big dog. All right. All right. All right. All right. We wrap about relationships in